What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know, you know, you know that this literally does not work. Um, going to be dealing with Rio in an hour and a half that I'm sitting down here, uh, catching up on everything that I missed while I was on the road yesterday and today and working and stuff. And I missed first take yesterday with Michael Irvin going off and, um, I, I didn't hear the tirade. I did not hear the tirade and I was listening in on it and it's kind of kind of cool it's actually really kind of cool i want you guys to listen to this because this is actually gold listening to all this uh we also got jerry jones perspective of cooper rush you know jerry who was the hype train of cooper rush and wanting to have a quarterback controversy um there only seems to be a controversy in Jerry's mind, as well as, of course, the talking heads who always like drama in Dallas. It doesn't seem to be that there's one in Dallas per se, but they are trying to make one, at least in the media. But let's listen in. We thought the sky was falling when Dak Prescott was sidelined, but Cooper Rush has been holding it down, reeling off two straight wins in Dak's absence. Here's Jerry Jones' evaluation of Cooper Rush. Well, let me say this. He's... Uh, uh, certainly uh, playing uh, as well as anybody could have expected has got the makeup uh, for a top uh, top quarterback and I underline the word makeup for a top quarterback for Dak as far as his ability to potentially function in a couple of weeks or a week or 10 days or two weeks three weeks four weeks I don't think you could ask for a better result the type of injury it is he'll be able to play within a week or two i think his progress is nothing short of amazing okay like jerry said cooper rush playing well as anyone expected but can he keep it up until dak returns here's the remaining schedule for the season our our analytics have dallas finishing with a 10 and 7 record in a 73 percent chance to make the playoffs mike mm. is feeling good after that monday Interesting. Night win over the giants let's flash back to his epic rant yesterday that had me crying. I had faith in Russ. We trust. I said that this is true. And Russ delivered. Oh my God. The Cowboys are 2 and 0 under Cooper <laughs> Russ. The season is not over. It just started. I'm going to tell you this too. I have been hurting because Ooh. I have been having to tell the truth about how great Philadelphia looks. And they do look great. And I said there is no chance. But with that finger licking, one, 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 pass Russ, we do got a chance. Now, we should talk about C.D. Lamb. Did you know the number eight stands for new beginning? That's why, that's why 88 is so special. God knows I needed so many new beginners. And 88 can take a new beginning. The Bible talks about men like this. They call them mighty men of valor. You might mess up, but you would do everything you have to do to make your mess up right. And that's what C.D. Lamb did last night. He did everything. You want to talk about a playmaker? That's a playmaker. He made the plays. And then the one hand is stabbed for the grab of the touchdown on the go ahead it's what playmakers do it's what 88 do i'm gonna be quiet maybe i've over talked and maybe i've overextended my world i may crazy. not ever be back again but i got in what i needed to get i'm gonna just Woosa. you passed your 11 minutes straight Wow. <laughs> the best part, my favorite line was maybe I overstayed my welcome. I might not be back. Molly, Molly yeah. can, can wow. I chime in before we start this subject? Yeah. Hey, That's he, said the he said the number eight. He said the number eight is for new beginnings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's two number eights. 88 is So it's a beginnings. double new beginning. Really? really? That, that, that's what he's going to do? Yeah, that's he what said he, he needed do. multiple I mean, I mean, new beginnings. What, what, yeah, he's, the, 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 exactly. the man and said they're gonna he need needed more. multiple. And they're going and they're going to need more. And they're going to need more. Can you let can you let can you let us have a moment? I mean, you just let us have a moment. Hold on, hold on. I was sitting next to the brother yesterday when he gave a damn sermon. What on national always, television while the always, sweat was blowing in my direction. You always want right to douse You always want to douse water on when we fired up. Let us have a moment. OK, we understand in the back of our mind what usually happens. But while we riding this roller coaster and we going up, let us enjoy it. He doesn't. OK, you're right. I apologize because I'll be there for the fall. 
<laughs> so you're right. <laughs> so you're right. You're right. I'll be you, right there for you. You have your time. I'll be right there. Let us have I'll our. be right there. I'll be right there. Okay. All right. All right. Let me ask you this, Swaggo, and I'll come to you on this. In all seriousness, do you think the Cowboys look like a playoff team right now? Yeah, they do. They do right now. Defensively, I think they're going to be one of the better units in the NFL, um, not just in the NFC East. And obviously, we know what Philly is offensively and defensively based on what they did to Washington. But what Dan Quinn has been doing is not something new that we've been talked about. We talked about this last year. Mm -hmm. And we asked about the sustainability of turnovers. Well, it's not in the vein of turnovers. It's in the vein of pressuring quarterbacks, making big plays, and, and putting teams in negative yardage situations. Mm -hmm. We think about when we think about Dallas, all we usually focus on, and even I've been a victim of this, is offense and Dak Prescott and the wide receivers and the offensive it's line. The D, offensive baby. line right now is the number one blocking offensive line in the NFL. And I know that has a lot to do with opponent, and it's going to get tougher as the road goes along. But there are some things about Dallas that even I didn't think would materialize this early. The other thing that I see, Molly, Stephen A. and Mad Dog, is that Kellen Moore has stepped his game up. Because sometimes you get into the vein of having a guy that you think can bail you out on everything that you're doing offensively. I've been critical of him. He's done a good job with Cooper Rush. It was the Giants and it was the Bengals. So I'm not about to start ringing the bell or sweating like Michael Irvin on the show or mm -hmm. talking about what God did like DJ Khaled. I'm mm -hmm. just going to sit back and say it, it, at 2-0, and oh, I didn't expect them to beat the Cincinnati Bengals. I, I, I expected them to beat the Giants because it's an indiv a divisional opponent and you can have success. The Cowboys look like a playoff team based on being in the NFC. If they were in the AFC, it might be a different conversation we would be having. They didn't believe. God did. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. I, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. It's just, it's just unbelievable to me. So let me let me get this straight. So they go up against a Bengals squad with no offensive line. That I was mean, in the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow's on suicide watch every weekend, okay? All right. It's, 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 so the Dallas Cowboys, uh, they hold on for their life after giving up a lead, and they got to squeeze that victory out, okay? And and then after that, they go up against Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. Okay, no quarterback, no number one quarterback, no number one wide receiver, nobody that's a number one kind of talent on the offensive line. All you got is poor Saquon Barkley trying to carry the Evan team. Evan Neal wasn't Jones. the first round but draft pick, number seven. Presses, and we're going to sit up there and say, you know, Dallas Cowboys look like a playoff team. I mean, this is unbelievable. I got to tell y'all something right now. This what is do they really, look really like? Funny, but for, for, well, you know what? They, they look like a decent football team. That's what what they they don't look like trash. They look like a decent football team with an elite defense, a suspect offense. Okay, and here's the reality of the situation: they got they vying for the wild card. They ain't, it ain't like they winning the NFC yeah. East. We all yeah. know that. Okay. We all know they ain't winning the NFC East. They ain't beat Philadelphia. And so when we look at it from that perspective, they ain't played right? Philadelphia. Since you got now, not gonna win your division because I'm declaring that I'm speaking that into existence because you it's just going to happen. New okay. Okay. Now <laughs> you got you got whether it's Los Angeles, Arizona, or San Francisco out west. Whether it's Tampa or New Orleans in the South, because somebody that's on this show right now, he don't have on his goggles, Spiano glasses right now. You understand? But 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 my, some dude named Marcus Spears that people affectionately know hey, as Swag Goo was talking about Jameis Winston and what kind of impact he was gonna get when I was talking about. Right now, my Look, bad. The, he's the question. Okay, so you got New Orleans and Tampa Bay in the South. You got Green mm -hmm. Bay, Minnesota, and we can't sleep on Detroit in the North and Chicago yeah. for that matter. Okay. All right. And of course, uh, that's what you got to deal with. So the Dallas Cowboys got to deal with all of those teams. Okay. Enough of that. Stephen A. Smith doing his hating and stuff. But I will say that Kellen Moore, because he has not had Dak Prescott out there, has actually been calling a great game plan. The fact that we've been using 12 personnel running the football and play action has been the winning formula. And, of course, having an elite defense, something the Cowboys have not had in forever, is making a difference for this Dallas Cowboy team. Anyway, I kind of enjoyed Michael Irvin going off. I hope you guys did, too. And hopefully you'll enjoy me going off on Rio Robinson in about an hour and a half. I'll see you there.